Hi everyone, it's Alex here at Sestrian Capital Research. Thanks for tuning in to our video analysis of NVIDIA's Q4 of the financial year ending 31 January 2024. So this has been a high drama event, as you know, uh, much of the market uh, was something off in anticipation of a possible weak print. Uh, and at the time of recording, uh, the market is up post the print and NVIDIA is a few points up on the day post the print. So um, I'd like to run through our fundamental analysis. That's a company financials. Uh, look at the valuation, the multiples of revenue and earnings and cash flow and so forth. And then look at the technical analysis, which is to say the stock chart and then give you our conclusions. This will be a short video. You will be able to find uh, endless, endless analysis of NVIDIA all over the internet from now until you know, the next 20 years. You can analyze NVIDIA pretty simply as we're about to do. Uh, before we do any of that, take a look at the disclaimer that is on your screen right now. In short, nothing of what you're about to see constitutes investment advice of any kind. And the webinar is intended for US recipients and in particular is not directed at nor intended to be relied upon by any UK recipients. Uh, the rest of the disclaimer is on your screen right now. Take a moment to read it. OK, fundamental analysis. Now, there's a lot of numbers on your screen. In essence, NVIDIA, a semiconductor company, as you know, is on the most unbelievable uh, growth tear and growth is accelerating. One of the things that uh, very commonly drives a stock price up is when the market sees revenue growth accelerating. So in other words, not just holding a 10 or 30 or 50 or 100% growth, but the growth increasing each quarter. And that's just what's happening here with NVIDIA. So back in 2022, growth was really anemic. Uh, on the April uh, 23 quarter, the first quarter of the current financial year, uh, growth was negative 13, 1.3% versus the same quarter of the prior year. That all changed uh, once the company's orders for uh, AI driven uh, systems, uh, data centers, uh, certain sorts of endpoints uh, and so on really started to explode. And that happened from the July quarter onwards. Or I should say the orders would have been before that, but the revenue started to get recognized from these exploding orders from the July 23 quarter. So in July 23, we see 100 percent growth quarter on the prior year quarter. The next quarter, ending October, we get 206% growth. That's here, uh, last quarter. And the current quarter, $22.1 billion of revenue in the quarter. That's a 265% growth quarter. Now, you just don't get companies with $60 billion of revenue growing at 265% very often. If you look on a trailing 12-month basis, which is to say you compare the last 12 months just uh, elapsed with the same period a year ago, um, the company is growing at over 100%. So we have a, a $60 billion revenue company that uh, a year ago was less than a $30 billion revenue company. And that is unusual uh, in, in the history of um, any markets, even semiconductor markets, which are prone to explosive growth. That's pretty unusual. And that's the reason that the stock has attracted so many buyers and why the price has moved up so much. It's not just growth, though. Uh, margins are very strong. Gross margin, that's uh, revenue minus the variable costs, costs that you would not incur had you had no revenue. Gross margin ticked up to 76% in the quarter, 73% on a trading 12-month basis. Now, if you look back to um, the January 22 quarter, two years back, that was 65%. Still very good, um, but now really very high for a chip business. And it's high because of their pricing power. It's also high because much of the value is in the software platform that they provide with their chips, the so-called CUDA platform. Um, software is much higher margin product than is uh, semiconductor. Uh, and that's one of the reasons the gross margin uh, percentage is so high. EBITDA margin, and you don't see this referred to in public stocks very often. It's a pretty useful measure. It's a very management friendly measure. So this basically takes operating income, adds back depreciation and amortization, which are non-cash charges, adds back stock-based comp, which is a non-cash charge and get you to earnings before interest tax, depreciation, amortization. It's a pretty good rough measure of cash flows, only a rough measure. And if you see um, good news in EBITDA, you have to be a little bit skeptical because it's a very pro-management way of measuring profit, but it's a useful measure. 
Uh, EBITDA margins for NVIDIA are up to 62%. Uh, that's up from 57% the prior quarter and from 35% in the April quarter. So again, not just revenue growth, but uh, really rapid uh, growth in earnings and improvements in earnings margin. Let's look at the really important thing, cash flow. Again, you won't see much commentary on that. Most people focus on EPS, which is not really a thing. That's an accounting concept. Cash flow is what matters. So how we calculate that is we take uh, the EBITDA number, we deduct CAPEX, the capital expenditure. That's money that the company has to spend on stuff that makes a noise if you drop it, computers, tables, furniture, that sort of thing. We then uh, deduct change in networking capital. Sounds complicated, isn't. In essence, if you get paid by your customers faster than you pay your suppliers, then this line here, change in networking capital, that will be positive. If you pay people out faster than you yourself get paid, then this line will be negative. If you look at a subscription software company, changing networking capital is almost always positive because they charge a lot up front and they pay their suppliers, there aren't many suppliers, slowly. With NVIDIA, um, they typically get paid uh, on delivery or slightly after by their customers, and yet they'll have to pay their fabrication partners uh, probably ahead of time or at time. They don't really have huge amounts of uh, leverage in their value chain, even though the products are critical, they don't have you know, huge power over their very large customers or their very large suppliers. So neutral-ish neutral, neutral -ish working capital changes in NVIDIA, a bit negative, but not very much. Cash flow margins are huge at NVIDIA, now 55% on a trailing 12-month basis. And again, if you look back uh, just over a year ago, 16%. Uh, so it really is a remarkable year the company's put in. Balance sheet, uh, superbly strong, 162 uh, 16.3 billion dollars of net cash on the balance sheet. It's a red number there. Uh, red mean red means cash. Black would mean debt. 16.3 billion dollars of cash sat on the balance sheet, doing not very much. So the, the balance sheet's incredibly safe. So in short, fantastic quarter by any measure. Uh, the company guided to 24 billion dollars of revenue next quarter, which is a slight deceleration in growth. Whether they beat that or not, obviously we don't know. But the fact is that. You know, that would be if they, if they hit that guide, then the company would have hit 200% TTM revenue growth, and you don't see that in startups very often. You know, never mind companies at this scale. So incredible quarter and great guidance. Let's look at valuation because, as everybody knows, Nvidia is overvalued, right? Everyone will tell you that. You know, the kid at the bus stop will tell you it's overvalued. We don't agree. So the valuation multiples are large. Okay, you'll pay 28 times trading 12 month revenue for this thing. That sounds like a lot when you can buy. You know, companies for one and two times trading revenue elsewhere. You'll pay 44 times trading 12 months EBITDA. Again, sounds like a lot. And you'll pay 50 times trading 12 months free cash flow. Is that expensive? Well, well, how do you judge it? You can only judge it compared to other companies. Let's take over here Raytheon, RTX. This is a, a perfectly good business. It's a defense contractor. Uh, I own uh, Raytheon stock personally, as I do at NVIDIA. Well, Raytheon grows at three percent revenue per year. Um, it is a, a leverage company, has about 4.3 times uh, trading 12 month EBITDA of leverage, so it has lots of debt. And um, you know, it's a defense contractor, so it's never going to be all that exciting. Well, the market today at the close was asking you to pay 24 times trading 12 months free cash flow for Raytheon. And it does pay a dividend, but you know, nothing meaningful. Whereas it's asking you to pay 50 times trading 12 months free cash flow for NVIDIA. So is NVIDIA putting this incredible fundamental financial performance, is that worth more than twice Raytheon on a cash flow multiple? Well, I believe it is. And so I, I do not believe NVIDIA is overvalued. You know, if anything, I would say it's undervalued compared to uh, more traditional companies. Now, that's only true if they maintain this kind of growth rate. If the growth rate falls off materially, so too will the valuation. But for now, looking at the companies actually, uh, actually achieved financial history and at their guide, the valuation on fundamentals does not look particularly expensive to me. Technicals. Now, again, this chart looks complicated. It isn't really. Uh, we'll share a link uh, in the video that you can click below to open a, a full page version of the chart. But in essence, here's what NVIDIA has done since the 2019 lows. This is all split adjusted. It started out at around $34 at the 2019 lows. It put in about a 10 times move up. Uh, into the end of 2021. So it went from, let's call it 35 to let's call it 350. It then sold off 
uh, through 2022 and put in a really important technical low. It, it, it touched a low, this so-called wave two low, at around the 78.6 Fibonacci retrace of this move up. It sounds complicated, it isn't. What that means is it the, the, the sell-off in 2022 dropped about 80% of the value that was created from the middle of 2019 to the end of 2021. Now, why is that important? Well, very often you'll see stocks, particularly liquid stocks like NVIDIA, rebound hard at that 78.6 retrace. Why? Well, because institutions trade to this. This is a language that institutions use to work out when to buy and when to sell stocks. We had NVIDIA rated at buy between 100 and 150 dollars. Um, and that was based on two things, the, the this technical reversal, which we thought would happen around here, and also the spiking volume in buying the stock, which you can see these gray bars on the right hand side here. That's volume by price. That's volume of the stock bought at any particular price zone. And this chart is, in essence, unchanged from what we said in late 2022. That's on the Internet. You can go and find it. And we said buy NVIDIA between 100 and 150. And we said that it, the stock could go to 600 plus. Well, it has. Now, the question is, what now? We had this up at hold, this yellow box we call a markup zone, where basically late money is pouring in and bidding up the stocks that were bought, the, the positions that were bought are between 100 and 150. So again, we'd said in 22 and early 2023, buy NVIDIA between 100 and 150, and we said price target in the 600s. So we've rated it a hold from 150 all the way up, and we still rate it a hold. Where might it sell off? Well, technically, um, in theory, it could start to sell off in the 700s. That would be the 200% extension of this wave one placed at the wave too low. Um, but it could go a lot further. And the way to, to work out where it's going to sell is wait. You'll, you'll know if it's selling off hard because guess what? It will sell off hard. And more than that, the volumes will spike. So this, these gray bars on the right hand side, that will spike. You can see that there's very little volume traded between around $500 per share and $750. These tiny gray bars here. This this is just late money buying. Right? This isn't big money buying. Big money, really smart big money was buying down here between let's call it 100 and about 160, 170. Again, we'd said buy between 100 and 150. And there was some more buying, which I would call late bulls between uh, about the mid 300s and around 500. And then after that, all the buying falls off. It's just retail at that point. So will it start to sell soon? I, I don't believe so, to be honest. I think it can go further. But the way you will know if it starts to sell is just watch it. Just watch the price. Don't anticipate it. Watch the price. If the price falls off and rolls over and starts selling on high volume, then the stock's selling off. But until then, it isn't. And so we believe that this stock can go higher, we think. So in short, NVIDIA, our conclusions and rating. We don't think this is a complicated question. Again, you will find you know, endless uh, copy, uh, endless amounts of videos, tweets, everything else on it, but we think it's a pretty simple question. It was a great quarter, that's a fact. Stock uh, doesn't look to us overvalued on fundamentals. That's an opinion, it's purely an opinion. Other people will disagree. And the chart looks like the stock can keep climbing. That's an opinion, other people may disagree. But in short, continue to rate Nvidia at hold. We believe the stock can run higher. Fundamentals, superb. Uh, the stock does not look, to our, our opinion, uh, overvalued, and we think the stock can, can keep moving up. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. The links are on the page, and you can click a link below to open uh, the, uh, the stock chart. Do take a look at our Substack. That's called Sestrian Tech Select. Again, the link is below uh, where we cover 50 or 60 tech stocks, uh, and we provide some free content, uh, some great paid content. And for our pro subscribers, you can look 24-7 at all of our stock ratings and stock charts for all the great tech stocks we cover. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you all soon.